And finally, new rule, before he leaves office, President Obama must send in the National Guard to desegregate America's last bastion of societal-approved racism, college fraternities. That's right. From now on, all fraternities must allow women, as well as a diverse collection of races and ethnicities. <laughs> so you're not really fraternities anymore. You're more like that hippie co-op on campus where a house full of art history majors gets stoned every night and makes a big lentil casserole. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, fellas. Gather up your beer funnels and your ass paddles and your lacrosse sticks and your big red plastic drinking cups and get the fuck out. <laughs> Sorry, brah. <laughs> From now on, if you want to live with 40 other dudes and hold secret homoerotic ceremonies, you're going to have to join the seminary. <laughs> you know, it's always struck me as strange that college campuses are where political correctness is the most stringently enforced, and yet smack in the middle are frat houses these little Vatican cities of depravity that seem to enjoy diplomatic immunity from civilization. There was a time when fraternities fit in with society as a whole, but that day is long gone. If you don't believe me, go back and watch Animal House. <laughs> in 1978, watching a guy deciding whether he should have sex with an out-cold high school girl was something we all considered hilarious. And Bill Cosby still does. <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds from 1982 has a scene where they break into a sorority and install cameras so they can watch the girls shower. And again, we all laughed. But this week, Penn State's Kappa Delta Rho frat was caught basically pulling the same stunt, and no one's laughing. For one thing, institutions that go out of their way to have no women around, it always leads to abuse and madness and lighting farts. <laughs> I mean, Scientology is bad, but at least it admits women. Every 10 years, someone has to pretend marry Tom Cruise. <laughs> and there's one other bad little thing about fraternities. They kill people. Every year, some kid dies when the hilarious dangle the pledge over the wood chipper prank goes awry. Since 1970, there's been at least one hazing-related de death every year as pledges routinely endure alcohol poisoning, sleep deprivation, waterboarding, being dressed in diapers, buried in trash, force-fed cat food. Jesus, why not just pledge ISIS? <laughs> well, hey, a cult is a cult. And that's what a frat is, a place where they strip you of your personality and rebuild it in their image. That's why when a girl says, I'm dating a frat guy, no one ever says, oh yeah, what's he like? <laughs> <laughs> I just told you I'm dating a frat guy. <laughs> my school had a lot of fraternities, but it never occurred to me to join one because finally in my life I was able to live on my own amongst women. So it had no appeal to me when some frat guy said, hey, how about coming with me to live with a bunch of dudes? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, we'll, we'll stick a carrot up your butt. <laughs> no wonder they call it the Greek system. <laughs> and this is where someone always says, but Bill, fraternities are a tradition. Yeah, so was throwing virgins in a volcano for a while. <laughs> if you think tradition is a good enough reason to paint your face or degrade women or drink yourself sick, or if you think a good place for a bottle rocket is your ass, <laughs> then maybe college isn't for you to begin with. <laughs> of all the bad things fraternities do, the absolute worst is that they take young people at the exact moment when they should be learning to be individuals and turn them into shit-eating orders-following group thinkers. 
Or maybe these guys all independently decided to wear shorts with a blazer and a bow tie. <laughs>